the majority of the older cars were 50s. Uh, Ford, Chevrolet, I think probably more Chevrolet than anything else. And some Buick and Studebakers and uh, just about anything. Some Cadillacs, and they were very popular. Some were convertibles. Some were just regular uh, sedans. And uh, as you get back into the 40s, there are fewer. And I think 130s, and then we ended up seeing a pre-20 Model T Ford in a pottery studio that we visited, and he was restoring it. And then there were some other older ones in museums, but the runners were basically 40s and 50s. What kind of uh, relationship did you have with the drivers of these cars? Well, at first I was a little hesitant. Uh, I would usually take pictures when they weren't in the car. But I found out they didn't seem to mind. And then when I pulled out an Alaska license plate, they were interested and r really taken aback a little bit that I was giving them something and uh, just to take a picture of their car. And I especially wanted to give them one when I put a Raven Radio bumper sticker on. I don't know if they're still on there or not. What's this car um with the uh the back seat is that a rumble seat there's well, a picture of a that, young man in a sweatshirt he's got his watch his elbow is yeah. leaning on the car he wasn't the owner but i gave him the plate and then the owner came over and it's a taxi it's a rumble seat it's a, a late 20s model a i think it was like a 29 model a it had uh, been retrofitted with some larger wheels and everything but it was really nice because you don't see many rumble seat cars around here rumble seat of course is where the trunk opens up with uh, two seats and there's two seats forward that was one of the oldest cars that i saw that was actually running but it was perfect shape i can't imagine that bumper sticker staying on that thing <laughs> well i don't know yeah um the nice thing about our bumper stickers they did match uh the uh, Cuban license plates. Right, right. The Same col color. There were some other colors. Some of the government plates are different colors, but the majority of uh, Cubans uh, had uh, yellow license plates. What about the man with the, uh, what is it, a cart? Or he a had a cart with a donkey pulling it, and I don't know, I just thought this was a great chance to put a bumper sticker on a donkey cart. And he was kind of in this town square, and he... Um, uh, allowed me to put it on, and uh, I uh, didn't give him a license plate, but I reached in my pocket, and uh, he got a few pesos. That was just too good. You know, it was it was. I was glad to give these people something because uh, they spent some time with me. This uh, Plymouth was at a hotel, and uh, it looked really pretty original until you went in, looked inside and had sort of a tuck and roll uh, modern upholstery to it. But um, I just can't believe in that salt air that the whole island really is exposed to, wherever you are, they've survived so well. But of course, a lot of them uh, were works in progress and a lot of them showed a lot of Bondo. And some of them really enjoyed flamboyant paint jobs, which weren't original like uh, this pink Ford, and in Havana near the hotel was a beautiful pink 1950 Ford convertible. So they've taken a lot of liberty with the colors, but 57 Chevys, there were a good number of them, and many of them were uh, really uh, uh, looked very original, except they had changed the wheels. Like a lot of uh, people in uh, the United States restoring these, sometimes they'll add a, a more modern wheel to it. And that one was that way. One of my favorites, and near the end of the trip, I got to looking and talking to people who own cars that definitely were not intended to be show cars or taxis. The taxis, many of the taxis were these older cars and they attracted people who wanted to ride in them. But this fellow, we were out actually at the Bay of Pigs uh, the site of our ill-fated uh, attempt one time to uh, sort of change things in Cuba. He worked at this uh, dive center and restaurant on the Bay of Pigs, and I could just tell this was his car for transportation. He wasn't interested necessarily in restoring it. 
It was just his way to get around. It was a 1951 three-hole Buick. Three-hole? What's three-holer? The... Oh, and this, remember the Buicks had these sort of uh, holes on the side that were kind of uh, falsely uh, uh, looking like some sort of a exhauster of some kind and like airplane exhaust manifolds. Yeah, they were they were definitely uh, show and. Uh, this one had three holes. But these it, these things right here by his head. Right, right there. And they, uh, as some of you know, Buick made a, a higher model with four holes. And so you call him a three-hole or a four-holer. But this 51, and uh, he let me put that bumper sticker on the back, and I think it's probably still there. In the meantime, I gave him some of these, this recent license plate. But I got to... Uh, realizing that some of the people with the really fine cars they get all the attention but i just like this guy he was very friendly and, uh, and then his friend came over and so i gave his friend a plate and so um it was a daily driver nice he seems proud of that plate yeah he really i think he appreciated it these were parked on the streets of Havana. These are some of the nicer ones, and they were out, you know, trying to make money with these cars. How do they make money by driving well, people? Well, uh, most of them were uh, legal taxis. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now this one, though, uh, he wanted everybody going by to get in. I noticed when I got in, though, he didn't want to close the door too tight because there was a gap or a little problem with the door closure there. This Ford uh, convertible. Is this a T-Bird? No, no, it's a it's a Ford mid fifties. Uh, you know, I didn't see many Thunderbirds. Uh, I can't remember. What kind uh, of car is this? It's uh, a Ford convertible. Uh, yeah. But it's got to be more than just a Ford convertible, isn't it? Called a Fairlane or something. Oh like yeah, that? they. I can't. You know, that was the bad part. A couple of us in the group were trying to remember the names of these things, but uh, and it had a Continental kit on it. But uh, anyway, uh, it was free to get in, but two pesos to get out. I think it's. Um interesting to think that there might be somebody someday from Sitka who will travel to Cuba not having heard this interview or seen this slideshow who's going to go what did I just <laughs> did I just see a Raven radio well, bumper our bumper sticker? stickers have been all over remember in uh, Mr. Holland's, Holland's opus yes. and I don't think we still know how that got in there this doesn't look like an American car Bill. no it's a Ford Angela uh, it's a Ford uh, from the 30s and that appeared in a cemetery along with a beautiful, I think, 58 or 59 Cadillac hearse. And again, I, out of respect, did not put a bumper sticker on the Caddy hearse. That reminds me of the hearse that uh, carried JFK. Yeah, it's, um, it was a classic, and uh, it looked pretty nice, but as you get closer, you can see they've Bondo. got some body work. But it, they used it. This was a, a cemetery, and it was a daily use, and a lot of us in our group commented, what a way to go. And this was a work in progress. And all over in the back streets, sometimes you saw them that were not running, but uh, probably like a lot of people in the United States, uh, they have an old car and they're working on it slowly. Now, this, this is a this is a T-Bird, right? No, this is a 57, uh, I think this is a 57 Ford convertible. Huh. And uh, they are very popular with weddings, these really nice ones. And this was, a, if you'll see, there's a little insignia on the door. This was uh, a person that had several really nice ones, and he was allowed to park them near the hotel. And so it was his business. Um, they were all perfect shape, or they looked perfect. But this one had been uh, chartered by a wedding party. Is that the, so br the bride and her maid of honor? The bride is up there. It looks like a uh, uh, homecoming parade. Mm -hmm. And as they say, that's our Cuba the Cuba license plate for regular uh, just passenger cars, and it matches our bumper sticker perfectly. And it could could have been modeled on the uh, original Alaska license plate. That's right. Mm -hmm. Same color. Same, same color. Same mm -hmm. sort of typeface. Probably my favorite was that uh, we visited a leper colony, and near the colony was a, uh, a church, a shrine that many people came to, and there were christenings going on and things, and this fellow was waiting for his family. And the reason I got acquainted with him, this was uh, a 49 Ford, and it was, uh, I remember that was one of the first of the post-war Fords that looked very modern. Uh, right after the war, the Fords looked all like the 41s and 42s, 
And this was just a major um, change in car design by Ford. I happened to have a Ford t-shirt with me and I was waiting for the right time and we were getting near the end of the trip and I found this fellow and I said, I have this Ford t-shirt because he was very proud that it was a Ford. And uh, so I gave him the t-shirt and um, I think he was taken aback. You could just tell he really liked this and I'm, I'm sure he'd be wearing his Ford t-shirt even though the t-shirt was Ford Mustang. Uh, it said Ford on it and that's all he cared. The same parking lot on Old Mercury, there's a probably a 46 Dodge, still operated as a taxi. And um, there were a lot of these older cars, especially the 40s with the hoods up and people looking in them. Um, and many times along the street, you'd, you'd see one that had sort of died for a while and everybody was around trying to figure out how to get it started, but they seem to be uh, able to keep moving. You know, I kind of miss that. We used to do a lot more standing around the hoods of, uh, yep. open hoods of cars, you know, pouring stuff mm -hmm. down the carburetor, trying to get the things going, and occasionally they don't. Right, right? and just at the same time, we turned around and somebody had a forklift taking this uh, Chevy uh, back to the garage, and I'm sure it's running today. We visited uh, senior senator centers, centers. We visited art groups, kind of art colonies and art consortiums. And this was a potter that we went in. And lo and behold, was this pre-20s Model T Ford in his shop. And uh, he had inherited it and was working on it. I'm not sure if it'll run for a while, but so they're out there someplace. This must have been brought to Cuba could have come on a sailing ship or an old steamer <laughs> or something. Well, you know, I, one one museum had this 1907 Cadillac, and then it said that there was also a 1902 Cadillac. And then uh, we passed up one kind of car museum that was in kind of a dark uh, uh, garage area, and it, it had some older teens in there. So they do have some older ones, but they're usually not running. Do you suppose if things change in Cuba that is is car culture imprinted on Cuba solidly enough that people will still care for and drive these old cars or are they just waiting for the moment when they can get their hands you know on a Mazda I think and they could now um, right. they're very expensive of course and you know there were a lot of newer cars but I think they have grown to love these cars so much. I just can't see them parting, and I think they'll be passed down through family uh, uh, members. I just, I really think they're, they're so proud of them, and especially uh, you can just see them sitting around and in them and standing by them. And so I think that will, will continue, and it will always be an incredible uh, Part of the visitor industry, I think, in Cuba is to go see these. There's nowhere else in the world you can see them mixed in and uh, operating. Uh, and I, I think they really will keep that. Nice. Well, um, you're going to go back in 53 years again and check it oh, out? Somebody asked me that uh, when I was there, one of our group, and I said, no, I think this is it. There's other things on my bucket list. This had been on my bucket list for a long time, so... Finally checked that one off, and uh, but like a lot of trips, uh, it went so fast, and you know I wish I'd have had more time. But under under uh, our trip, uh, you know I was always the last person in line and dragging behind, and the poor tour leader was always looking out for me and uh, wondering where I was. Yeah, he's probably sick of the cars, you know. Yeah, it's that's probably right. old news for right. him. So anyway, well thanks, Bill, for coming in and talking about it.